Hello everyone. We're here to look at another Bible today. This is one that I had rebound recently. I know that it's been a while since I've done a Bible review, so considering that we are so past due, uh, I wanted to take a look at uh, a rebind this time. A little bit of history on this Bible. This Bible was sent to uh, a small bindery owned by uh, one person, and as far as I know, he is a one-man um, a one-man shop. I think he does all of his work from beginning to, to end all by himself. Uh, the Bible bindery is called Ben's Bibles and the owner is Benjamin Vanoy. You may have seen some of his work on the Bible Exchange Facebook page uh, or you may have seen it on his own Facebook page. But I've been following Ben's work since I learned about him a little over a year and a half ago. And from what I've seen, uh, his work is pretty impressive, so I decided that I was going to send him one of my Bibles to be rebound. Lately, I've really been into uh, sending Bibles to various bindery houses to see the quality of their work. I've sent Bibles to AA, to Leonard's, um, I've sent Bibles to um, Diego Coloca Jr., who is another independent uh, bindery. And uh, but I've never sent anything over to Ben and so when I've seen the pictures online of some of the things that he's done his work was very interesting to me uh, he did some things that I haven't seen done in other binderies and um, his attention to detail really spoke to me so I decided to send him this Bible and uh, I finally received it in the mail so I'm going to be doing a quick review on this Bible so you can kind of get an idea of uh, how Ben works and the quality to expect. Um, now what I'm not going to do in this review, I'm not going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with other binderies. This is specifically for Ben's uh, work, but I would like to down the road uh, eventually do a side-by-side -side comparison of the work that I've sent to the various binders um, and hopefully that helps people make their decision because I can attest to the fact that not all binderies are created equal. <clears throat> so. Looking at this Bible, what we have is a rather large text block. This is the 2008 printed ESV single column reference. Um, Crossway only printed this particular Bible uh, in the United States for one year in 2008. The 2007 edition, which was the first year that they did the SCR, was printed in Belgium on fairly decent paper. Uh, then they brought the work home to the United States for one year. They printed in-house uh, and they printed it on a, on a very nice, thick, opaque paper during that one print year. And then in 2009, they sent their production overseas to China to have the text block printed uh, in China. And that is when, in my opinion, the, the paper quality took a drastic dip. Um, so if you are looking for an ESV in the single column reference from Crossway, uh, 2008 USA text block is the one to look for even though they're very fairly rare uh, a little bit harder to come by and generally more expensive the 2007 Belgium edition was not bad um, that would be my next choice and then anything 2009 and newer would be the China text block which is m more of the inferior text block in my opinion um, and that's actually what Allen used on their uh, SCRs that they bound a few years ago is the Chinese text block. Um, so just something to keep in mind. So the Bible itself is uh, six and a half on the, the, the block itself is six and a half by nine and a quarter and it's just a little under two inches thick. This is not a small Bible as you can see. Uh, it is is a thick Bible, um, but it's a great Bible for preaching. It's a great Bible for, for studying. Um, and we'll take a look at the text itself, but let's look at some of the characteristics of this particular rebind. Now, I'm pretty particular when it comes to my rebinds. I usually have a vision in mind on what I want a Bible to look like before it goes out the door. Um, and that's exactly what happened with this Bible. I could tell from some of the other work that Benjamin put out that he has the skill and the ability to kind of tailor work to your specifications. And I really like that because I had a very specific vision for this text block. This is the 2008 Crossway ESV SCR. And so it's a very special text block to me, not easy to come by. And I really wanted it to look a very specific way since I'm going to be using this Bible mostly for, for preaching. 
um, and it's going to get quite a bit of use. So I, I had actually put together a um, small PDF, like a two-page PDF document with very specific details on what I wanted this rebind to look like. Uh, and I also included some very crude drawings, uh, computer drawings, to show him kind of some of the design structures that I wanted on the spine. Um, and I sent it over to him. Really wasn't sure what to expect, whether or not he'd be able to capture my vision or not. But I've got to say, I've been reviewing Bibles for a long time. I've handled hundreds and hundreds of Bibles. Ben was able to deliver spectacularly. Um, and I know that sometimes it's difficult to gauge the honesty of a reviewer on whether or not the quality that they're talking about is really there or whether they're just trying to drum up business for the, the, the bindery house because they were given a free Bible. I can tell you that this was not a free Bible. Uh, I did pay for this Bible. Um, I'll talk about pricing a little bit later on, but uh, the review itself is uh, completely honest. Uh, this is just my opinion on Ben's work. So uh, I hope that that comes through loud and clear in this review. So starting with the cover, uh, I asked Ben to bind this for me in a Minnelli calfskin. This is a black Minnelli calfskin. The reason I wanted Minnelli calfskin is I'm a big calfskin fan. I, I actually prefer it over goatskin. Uh, I like the uniformity of the grain. It's a little bit smoother in texture. It's kind of pebbly. Um, but I also saw in some of the photos that this Manelli itself is a very thick leather and I really wanted a nice thick leather on this Bible. I didn't want that thin paper-like leather. This Manelli calfskin is nice and thick um, and I have to say if you're considering one of Ben's Bibles, I highly, cons uh, I highly recommend the Manelli calfskin. It is beautiful, it is durable, it's soft. Uh, really supple. It's such a gorgeous leather uh, and it comes in multiple colors. So this is what it looks like up close. Um, you can see the grain there. It's very reminiscent to me to uh, the leather on what I call the Judge. It's the 2002 uh, Lockman NASB single column reference. Um, if you've been around the Bible forums and you've probably heard the term the Judge tossed around, that's, that's the Bible I'm referring to. Um, and the leather on that is very similar, although I will say that the leather on this Bible, this Manelli itself, is even thicker than the leather on the Judge. Um, equally as nice, equally as soft, just a little bit thicker, which is to my liking. A very nice leather, again, um, very durable. This is going to last a lifetime. I asked Ben to do a very specific pattern on the spine. So as you can see here, I have some raised hubs I've got two at the top, two at the bottom, and then I have these curved hubs around uh, a sword cross in the middle. And this is exactly the design that I had in mind when I sent this over to Ben. This is what was shown in my schematic. Um, and I wasn't sure if he's going to be able to deliver this for me. As you can see, they wrap around the Bible text block. Uh, and it's, it's exactly what I wanted. It's such a unique look. Uh, to anyone who sees this, they'll probably give it a second look because Let's face it, we don't really see Bibles like this out there. No one's really doing this. Um, so it's a very eye-catching design and it just it feels great. It's just such a wonderfully crafted spine. Um, I can't say enough good things about how well and how much detail went into uh, getting this look. As you can see, uh, there's also some gold stamping and this is uh, something new to Ben. He just, he just purchased a um, a foil machine that allows him to actually emboss the spine with some gold lettering. Um, he doesn't have a lot of different font types available, but I think the ones that he does have look great. As you can see, the ESV uh, SCR in the crossway is very cleanly stamped. It's exactly what I wanted. Uh, and then at the top here, the Holy Bible, again, very cleanly stamped. Um, I think that uh, he's only going to get better and more options with the stamping because uh, like I said this is fairly new for him but this gold on black fantastic looks phenomenal um, and the amount of detail is just incredible that went into these raised ribs and into this cross really feels nice it's it's well um, well done I, I love 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 the look of the spine um, was very surprised that he was able to deliver on my design specifications 
So let's take a look a little bit about at the inside here. I asked him to uh, match the liner with the end paper. The end paper is kind of like a cloth feeling paper. It's got a really cool texture to it. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see. Um, this looks kind of like some of the stuff that Alan has used in the past. And uh, it's just really nice. It's got a good texture. It looks good. It's nice and thick. Um, that's exactly the, the what I had in mind when I had envisioned the the end page. Um, the liner itself is lambskin, a very thick lambskin. And if I hold it up here, you can see it's a this color is a little bit. It's on like a navy lambskin, um, and it is a perfect complement to this Manelli calfskin. I've had lambskin Bibles in the past that I was not a fan of the lambskin. It was either too uh, stiff and felt like it was brittle or it just didn't have the right texture. But this this feels kind of like a really, really smooth calfskin, but it is indeed uh, a lambskin. And it's just such a great complement to this thick Manelli's um, calfskin. Now, the other thing I wanna point out is if you look closely, you're probably not gonna be able to tell but Ben did not fold the Manelli calfskin over this lambskin. He basically cut this to be perfectly in line here with, uh, with the outer cover, and he just folded over the cover and glued it down. So along this seam here, where the gold line is, if you look really, really carefully, you can see how the precision of the cut of the liner and the exterior cover matches perfectly. And when I, when I kind of bend this, See if I can capture that. If I bend it, you really can't tell. You can't tell where the seam is. You, it's just such a flawlessly done uh, job that you can't even tell where the seam is for the inner liner and the outer cover. It's just so perfect. Um, I have had other binderies that have done a similar type of a seam, and it's. I mean, when you when you bend the cover back like this, you can actually see the seam separate. You can't you can't see that on Ben's work. He takes so much time to make sure that it's perfectly cut that there's no there's no uh, there's no way that you can see where um, where it's where it's paired up. I mean, it's just it's flawless. The other thing that I asked Ben to do for me was these gilt lines. Um, he he does a similar type of a gilt pattern on the inside where he kind of has a floral pattern on the bottom and on the top, on the inner and outer, or on the, the uh, outer inside cover and the, the back cover here. That's, that's kind of his traditional approach. I didn't really like that too much, so I asked him if he could experiment with some gilt lines. And these are the first gilt lines that he's done on a Bible. I'm going to hold that up. Yeah, you heard me correct. These are the first gilt lines that he's done on a Bible. Look at that. I mean, that's really incredible. These are some of the nicest uh, gilt lines that I've seen. I mean, they look very Allen-esque, like Allen's uh, gilt lines. You, you really can't even tell um, that these were done, you know, by uh, a fairly small binder. I mean, this looks like such a high quality job. I was just blown away that he was able to deliver on on these gill lines they're fantastic and i encouraged ben to add this feature to um, his order list so that people can actually order this from him on their bibles uh, because they look fantastic uh, and against this navy and this black great great um, contrast and it just really complements the gold on the spine as is characteristic to most of my rebinds, I request that the inner cover on the front be stamped with what the outer cover is. So here it says Manelli calfskin in gold. And I also like to kind of uh, keep the uh, bindery that did the work for me. I like their work stamped on the back on the inside. So here it says Ben's Bibles. Um, you know, it's kind of a testament to the hard work that they put into these Bibles and no matter who ends up owning this Bible, whether it's something I pass down to my kids or, or someone else, they can always see who did the work and appreciate it as much as I do. So it's just a little something that I like to do to have the, um, the person who works on the Bible uh, kind of put their trademark on there. That's not something Ben had asked to do. That's something I had asked him to do. Um, I do believe that Ben reinforced the spine on this, um, so it still does open flat. So if I open it up here to um, to Genesis, you can see for being a thick Bible, it still does lay flat. Um, that partially has to do with the fact that 
it's just a really great text block in its own and it, it has that type of flexibility. The other part of it is just how Ben does his work. He does not stiffen the text block uh, very much so that you can't open the Bible. I mean, we're in Genesis on a two inch thick Bible and the Bible is still flat. So, you know, really, uh, a, and it's only going to break in more because I haven't really used this text block much. Uh, you can also see here that I've got red page ends. Uh, ben does do uh, dye on the end of the pages. He also does gold over the red. I opted this time to go with just red. Um, I didn't really want the gold. The gold was a spray paint style of gold and I wasn't really into that. Um, so I asked Ben to do two or three coats of this red archival page dye and I think it came out spectacular. I mean very uniform and even. Uh, nice thick red color um, and even when I fan out the the Bible you can see here it just looks, looks spectacular. Um, so I would recommend that if you're not huge on the gold, uh, red under gold, and you want to try something different, you won't be disappointed with just red. It gives it a very classic look. It probably will last a little bit better than the gold dye because if you uh, run your fingernail over it and scratch it, it won't show up as much as the gold. So um, the one other thing I want to focus on here is Ben's corners. Um, the corner work that Ben does blows me away. Um, it is. I have to say the best corner work that I've seen short of Arl Allen's corner work, their corner work is just incredible. I, you have to give it to Allen. This is either right on par or very, very slightly um, uh, a little step below Allen's. I mean, that is saying a lot for, for Ben's work. He is so meticulous, so dedicated to details that, I mean, his corners are absolutely flawless. Uh, it, probably one of my favorite things about this Bible is the corner work. It's just incredible how much detail went into that. Uh, so long story short, I own a lot of Bibles. I've owned a lot of Bibles. The work that Ben does is phenomenal. If you have money for a rebind, I would highly consider Ben before you go anywhere else. Um, you're going to be paying a little bit more with Ben. Um, that's just the, 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 the fact. This exact work that you're seeing here with all of the features, everything that you see, um, is about $300. Now, that's a lot. I understand not everyone has $300 to spend on a rebind. Here's what you're getting for the $300. You're getting the most top-notch quality leather that you can, you can find. Uh, at least in my opinion, some of the nicest calfskin, some of the nicest leather. Ben is also willing to work with leather that you can provide for him if you would prefer something he doesn't carry. Um, you're getting an incredible amount of attention to detail. Ben is very detail oriented. He's wanting to make sure that you uh, like your Bible and so he's willing to try new things if, if, if they're even possible. Uh, he's, try, he's going to try to make this Bible to your specifications. Um, the, the attention to detail is really what I would consider uh, Ben for just because I'm very particular and I've been disappointed with other binaries in the past that have not been able to really follow my directions. Um, and you're going to get a lifetime Bible. Considering that most binaries average around $200 in, in my experience for a Bible, um, a lot more usually if you add the bells and whistles and many of the larger binaries won't do the coloring on the page ends and they don't do the design like this on the spine. In fact, many of them don't even have the gold stamping features. Considering that you're going to be averaging about $200 to $225 as it is, $300, $300 gets you a lifetime Bible to your specs absolutely fantastic work. Ben does also offer uh, an expedited service. If you pay a little longer, he can get your Bible done in a shorter time frame. You may want to consider that if you're in a hurry. Um, they, he has a lot of work coming in. He's quite busy, so there might be an up the, the chance that it's going to take him a while to get to your rebind. But um, highly recommend him. I have a lot of Bibles. This has just jumped to the top three or four of all the Bibles that I own. I will probably be reaching for this Bible when I preach over any other Bible in my collection. Um, and just top-notch work can't speak highly enough. So thank you, Ben, for the wonderful work that you've done on this Bible. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put Ben's information up on the screen if you uh, want to reach out to him. Great guy. You can find him on Facebook. 
you can find him um, on his own business page on Facebook, or you could also email him, and he'd be more than happy to provide you with a quote and any more details. He does also do cheaper Bibles, so you don't have to spend 300 on a Bible with Ben. You can you can do uh, a lot a lot less uh, features and a lot different leather, and there's so many things you can do, and he can work with you on that. But uh, if you want this look with what I showed you today, it's going to be 280, $300 range. So. Um, thanks again, Ben. Thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day.